I'm not sure I need a mic. My wife always tells me my voice is too loud. And you need a mic. Bigger mic. And it's got more. Well, we're all here because we're worried about San Leandro Hospital. And uh, I've, I've worked there for so many years, and I have so many friends there. And uh, I feel like I need to stand up and try to give a perspective from a caregiver that has been on, in, on the front lines for the last 35 years. I spend so much of my time in the emergency rooms or the operating rooms or the ICU of all these hospitals around here that I think I can give a perspective that hopefully will be helpful. Um, I think that it's become clear to me as this the last five or six years have ground along um, with the prospect of closure of San Leandro Hospital of why it happened in the first place. And I think that uh, the upshot is that uh, the board, the district board, the district health care board was was uh, made up of a large number of people who were extremely worried about Eden Hospital. And rightly so. Eden needed to be rebuilt to help to earthquake standards. And we all agree, I'm, I'm delighted that they have a new hospital, really. I think it was good. It needed to be done. We're delighted that it has happened. It's going to be a beautiful facility. And I, for one, uh, am welcoming it and, and will enjoy working there. Uh, the, however, that precedent took was that need and that uh, threat of, of not getting it rebuilt uh, took precedence over the rest of the community. And I think they made a decision to, uh, to work with Sutter to get it rebuilt and essentially threw San Leandro Hospital under the bus. The, uh, the deal, it, it seemed to me that, that uh, the, that the the need to get it rebuilt became so important that the rest of the community, in San Leandro in particular, was, was left to go begging. So I think that since that, since the board has been reconstituted with people, once this became an issue, it's obviously that the community wants San Leandro Hospital to continue. And I think that uh, what, what we see is, uh, has been a an effort to justify closure of San Leandro Hospital over these last five years. Now, it's a busy place, and I, they tell me, oh, it's not making money, and, and of course, that's partly due to the payer mix, so, that, so it isn't, isn't a, a community or a, um, a for-profit hospital, and it doesn't make a lot of profit, but it is busy enough that I would seriously question whether it doesn't at least come close to breaking even. I know in the years prior to the being run by, by, prior to the merger with Eden and prior to the purchase of the hospital by the, uh, by the district, uh, it, it was profitable most of the time. But in the years since then, we've been told it's not profitable. Well, my group does about a thousand surgical cases in the hospital every year. And the OR, I can tell you right now, after I get done with this meeting, I'll have to go over and do about three surgeries yet today in the evening, and it'll take me till 10 o'clock tonight to finish them. That's the kind of volume that it has. The, the, uh, the in intensive care unit many times is filled to the brim so that, so that we can't, we have to watch what cases we do because we may not be able to get a patient that needs to be in the unit in the unit because they're just the beds are all full. So I, you know, seeing this volume and seeing seeing the all this come down, I ask myself, what are we going to do if that hospital closes? This the I can tell you that all the hospitals that are left in this area and a lot of them have closed are absolutely vital in my mind to the community. They're probably wondering where I'm at. <laughs> and I, I really feel that it's gonna leave such a void that, 
that there will be a health crisis. People in San Leandro will not be able to get timely care, and, that, and some people will die because of it. If Eden were being built twice the size it is, and it, and it were gonna, truly made to be to allow uh, both communities to be cared for in it, then I would I have no argument at all. I think to the economy of scale and things, you could argue that that might even be better. But it is not. And so therefore, I think we, we need this hospital. The community needs a hospital. That as people get older, we're going to need more facilities, not less. And so I stand at a rise in support of keeping San Leandro Hospital open and uh, for the benefit of the community and all the seniors that live there. Thank you. So we'll do the testimony. Um, while people are coming up, um, I had a couple of thoughts, um, which I had uh, mentioned to Betty before. One is, I think all of you have seen the uh, ad that that center put in the newspaper touting their community benefits. If you haven't seen it, um, they put an ad in the newspaper, I guess full page, um, yes. talking about how many dollars worth, I don't remember. Um, but I was talking to uh, Ms. Yee earlier, and there was no, um, requirement to have that geographically distributed back to the communities that they're in. So we don't know where that money, where that community benefit is going. So I think one question might be, should there be some kind of regulation or some kind of requirement that we just don't look at an aggregate figure, but uh, it should go back to the communities where you, you are, where you, you know, have your facility. Um, I think the other thing is, um, as you know, the regulations and if you have more questions, um, Alex could answer this. But right now, the only regulations regarding hospital closures are that a hospital give notice and then the, uh, a 90-day notice to the county. The county holds a hearing to talk about the impacts, and then we send that report up to the state, and then the State Department uh, of Health Services makes a determination about whether that hospital should close or not. Um, another idea I had was perhaps when a nonprofit hospital um, is going to close an emergency room in beds, that they have a higher standard um, in terms of community notice hearing uh, because obviously um, they are getting this tax break. And I don't think, I mean, I personally think they should have a higher standard when they're going to close an emergency room. So perhaps that's another you know, idea that could be entertained. Um, just so that you know, um, the audit will be coming out, which will be great because I'm really looking forward to it. But in 2005, in the state, the tax break was $242 million, not just for Southern, but for all of them. We're talking about a sizable amount of money here that these institutions are saving. So I think it's fair, totally fair, to ask them to, to meet higher standards. And certainly um, in this community, that absolutely goes for sure. Excuse me, was that all the hospitals together? That was all hospitals okay. together, but that was quite a few years ago. So I think, yeah, I think the report that comes out in, in August will have the newer figures, and I'm sure you're going to see a higher, because as, um, as you pointed out, actually, the, what, it, it's the exemption, right? You said it double, what was the, what the, yeah, over the last 10 years the value of the hospital exemption has doubled. So it's going to be high. It's going to be much, much higher than that. But that's just to give you some idea. And it's not an insignificant amount of money. Um, so we have uh, speakers, so I'll call you. And um, since, if you could try to stick to three minutes, if you need to go over, that's fine. But we don't have too many speakers, so I, I want to give you adequate time to. You know, to say what you have to say. Um, the last thing I want to say before I start this too is we did invite Sutter to come to this hearing, but I don't believe they're here. They're here. <laughs> okay. Did you invite Tony Santos? <laughs> I don't want to get in, into that. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, oh, I also want to uh, recognize the position organizing committee from, um, and they've spoken at other hearings and want to thank them for their support of the local community and the hospital. So first we'll hear from Papa John. This one here? Yeah. So you can either make a comment or you can ask questions to the speakers. 
you like how I move that so Okay, so we will, we will try to do three minutes because the cards are coming off, okay? And Alex has a turn off. Hey, is this on? Yes. Yes. Usually you don't even need this thing with me. <laughs> uh, but I'd like to echo what everyone has said so far. Dr. Gingri is 100%. And what you say about they should be under a little more strict. Uh, they should be looked at a little differently. Uh, now, everyone, pretty much everyone knows Papa John has been to that ER before. And I wound up with having to go for a four-way bypass. And I wouldn't be here if we didn't have that ER. Well, about two weeks ago, excuse me, my better half was in that ER. And if we don't have that ER, and if it wasn't there, she might not be here today. Now, it's not just, you know, money that keeps hospital open, it's, it's people. And you people all have to get together, we have to stick together. This hospital has to stay open. Carol Rogers is a dear I've known for 13 or more years, and uh, uh, you know, everybody here, uh, thank you for coming, and everybody that's sticking up for this hospital, you're sticking up for me, my wife, yourselves. You let this hospital close, you may be closing the door on your life. So let's just stick with it and everybody, every chance you get, tell somebody else, this hospital must remain open. Sutter makes plenty of money. Patrick Fry makes a little more than I do. I think about four million dollars a year more. So if he can afford that, lifestyle we can afford to live so please everybody stick with it stay with it and let's keep this hospital open i thank everybody here thank you no she's in the nursing home i know <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I'm Stan Seifried. I'm a, a psychiatrist, a psychiatric physician, I say, in order to distinguish myself from a psychologist. Uh, <clears throat> in any event, I have been practicing in the East Bay for about 45 years. I've been here longer than you have, Bob, <laughs> which is why I'm going to retire next year. <laughs> Uh, one of the concerns that I have about Sutter is that as a psychiatrist, it seems obvious to me that their, their interest in profit making, even though they are alleged to be a nonprofit organization, is so, shows itself so clearly in what they have done with all of the psychiatric units in all of the hospitals that they have controlled locally. They just closed the psychiatric unit at Eden Hospital. Why? Well, I, I'm sure that it wasn't making as much money as some of their cardiovascular specialty units are making. They have, uh, they closed every, every hospital that they've touched. <laughs> they have closed the psychiatric unit. Providence Hospital in Oakland used to have a a psych unit, doesn't have one anymore. Um, in San Francisco, St. Luke's had a r relatively large psychiatric unit, which no longer exists once Sutter became the commanding officer of it. And so I think that it really is very important for us to recognize that psychiatric care is an a very important issue in this in our community and in our state. I found it absolutely astonishing that one of the new prisons in in uh, California is building within the prison a 150 bed psychiatric unit. 
Now, why should they have to do that? Because all of the crazies are now going to jail. And as a result of that, the prison system is filled with people who have psychosis. And fortunately, they at least recognize the fact that these people don't need rehabilitation in the, in the, in the penal sense, but rather need treatment. But that is absolutely astonishing to me. We closed the psychiatric hospitals in California, and now we're opening them in the prisons. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carol Rogers. I'm talking to you here as an individual and not as a member of the Board of Eden. Healthcare district, but um, I, I'm talking to you as a as a nurse who's worked at San Leandro Hospital for five years. Even though I'm retired now, thank you. Um, I one of the points I'd like to make is that um, San Leandro uh, Eden Medical Center canceled their Medi-Cal contract several years ago, so that doctors cannot schedule elective surgeries, elective admissions for anybody who receives Medi-Cal. Uh, I think that that's Sutter Health acting uh, in their role as a monopoly when it comes to health insurance. Their, their costs are, are extremely high uh, and we pay for it out of our, our health care premiums. Um, I know that as an employee of, of Eden Medical Center, uh, we nurses, I, I'm sure we're, this is still going on, as employees, we're given little cards that we turn in regularly to document the, our volunteer work uh, on our own time. And this report goes into Sutter Health's report for community benefit. And you know, this, this isn't them, this is me volunteering my time. And then when I wanted to um, uh, go to uh, Houston Astrodome as a volunteer after Hurricane Katrina, I asked for two weeks paid vacation, which I had coming to me to do that, and they agreed only to do it if I would go on unpaid vacation, and they required all the other nurses on my floor to come for me while I was gone and no overtime. So that was really a struggle for, for the nurses that, that I worked with. Um, I also know that Center Health, um, well, in, um, San Leandro Hospital received a CT scan as a donation in New England. And Eden hired their own contractor and didn't, did not go out for bid on that, charged the hospital $1 million, which is outrageous. We don't see their financial statements anymore because they're not a public entity. We, we don't know what charges that are, uh, that are given are reported on the books of San Leandro Hospital that are really not our expenses. I know that they charge us a king's ransom for Southern Health's uh, administrative fees, and now we have a, a second tier of expenses that we um, uh, pay for the new regional administrative fee, so that there's two different tiers of administrative fees that our hospital pays for. And uh, I think that that's a common practice. Um, all I can say as a person on the Eden Township Healthcare Board, District Board, is that San Leandro Hospital is still open and we're still in negotiations. Thank you. Hi, Brian. <coughs> and as you come in, I want to recognize um, the California Nurses Association, who, of course, represent the hard working nurses at San Leandro Hospital. I want to thank you, Supervisor Chan, for pulling together this, this great meeting and um, for um, the State Board of Equalization member Yi for being here with us today. Think attention to this issue, the nonprofit status of hospitals in our state is long overdue. When you think about it, we subsidize these hospital chains when they run uh, under nonprofit status. The taxpayers do. The taxpayers subsidize hospitals that are supposed to be held and run in the public trust but often aren't run that way. And some hospital chains, like Sutter Health, 
have clearly demonstrated that they don't deserve our trust and they don't deserve a nonprofit exemption. Not only did Sutter provide a pittance in charity care versus their total revenue, but as, as the doctor stated, they close units in their facilities without regard to our communities. In Eden San Leander alone, they've closed a skilled nursing unit, an acute rehab unit, a psychiatric unit, and they're about to downgrade the nursery, nursery services for sick children at the Eden campus. And this is going on across the Bay Area. Sutter has closed units in almost all of their facilities. And their closures are based on revenue and profit motive. They're not based on what is best for our communities. Sutter's, uh, as many here uh, well know, has also attempted to close entire hospitals. In Santa Rosa, in the Mission District in San Francisco, and a close, and of course, right here, in San Leandro. Sutter makes these closure decisions without regard to our communities and with minimal obliga obligations to governmental authorities. Hospital corporations like Sutter that make bad decisions based on profit do not deserve to hold nonprofit status. They don't deserve to get a pass on paying taxes that could benefit our communities. And Sutter can certainly afford to pay their, pay their taxes. They made $316 million in the first quarter of this year alone. They've made a profit of over $4 billion since 2004. That's billion with a B. And CEO Pat Fry makes over $2,000 an hour. Sutter can afford to pay taxes and afford to keep San Leandro Hospital open. I want to thank you all again and encourage you to move forward with this re-examination of hospital nonprofit status, move forward into uh, concrete results working with uh, the legislature and whoever else we need to work, work with. Thank you very much. What are the out of the box ideas and funding opportunities um, are being, that are being explored? And Mia Oste um, from the Coalition to Save San Leandro Hospital uh, says all the information you've given is not news to many of us based on the failed appeal. What steps can we take to save San Leandro Hospital? So, uh, Dan. Dan, what do you want to speak to? Yeah, uh, I haven't been paying attention to this issue as much as I should have since I live here in San Leandro and I work here. And just today, actually, earlier today, I was going to take my son to San Leandro Hospital because he was having a migraine. Uh, but then, you know, we got him something to eat and we decided we'll wait a little while, but he still may be going later today. But here's my question, out of the box thinking, look, we're all restricted by this box, which is our money, which is the county money, but really what, is, what, is, what are the plans, what are the ideas? Have we talked about doctor-owned facilities? Have we talked about co-ops with the citizens and residences? What kind of marketing things have we done to even let folks know that San Leandro Hospital is open for business still? Because honestly, a lot of folks that I talk to think it's already closed and that there's this big dilemma going on. So I think there needs to be some kind of cohesive, collective thinking out of the box and how we get funding. I know that the county is dedicated to John George. I know they're dedicated to Juvenile Hall. I know they're dedicated to the prisons. So how can they get dedicated to serving our seniors, our youth, and everyone in between here in San Leandro? We've given up a lot. We have these other facilities that actually put us at risk as citizens and as business owners. And I think it's time that the county starts to somehow think outside of the box on how to facilitate and get us help to keep this hospital going and to start serving us in that area so that there's a balance to the scale. And that is we have all these things, like I just mentioned, and they're being uh, funded and taken care of with, without question. And I'm just saying that there should be thousands of people here in this city, but they're probably unaware that there's still a hope and chance. And I'm just hoping that, um, that somehow that we can all work together at the county level, the citizens, you know, maybe individuals who don't have Kaiser insurance can come together and somehow we can pay into this. Doctors can be owners. Maybe the citizens can be owners. Maybe the city itself can be a, a part owner and actually start turning this into a, you know, look, everyone needs 
food and everyone needs health care. So I'll, I'll end at that. The point is there is opportunity here to turn around crisis into opportunity. And I just think it's connecting dots. I bet they all exist. We just need to start thinking outside the box. That's my comment and question. Hi, I'm Mia Housley. So um, to Alex Briscoe and um, to Ms. Yi, I mean, you've presented a massive amount of information here today. On the local side, much of that information was already known to many of us. So my question would be, in that circumstance, I mean, what suggestions can you provide right now you know, for us to make progress in saving San Leandro Hospital with this information? We know it's needed. What can we do as a next step? Um, where to go? So, Ms. Yi, most of your information, being statewide, is new to most of us. Most of it's new to most of us. So, I think it, you know, I look at San Leandro Hospital as a prime example of, like, medical redlining by Sutter. Um, it just flies in the face of charity care. And Sutter ought to have its exemption revoked immediately. <laughs> From the information you've given us, I mean, I don't see that the review or the audit is going to do anything in terms of revoking anybody's status other than the two hospitals who never responded to your information requests. So with that in mind, um, what chances do we really have to um, redefine what would qualify hospitals for exemption and in time to save our hospital? You know, what leverage can we have right now with this information against Sutter to save us? So, I have questions. I'm hoping you two can maybe provide some answers here instead of just hearing the question. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. That's a great question. Uh, I think more immediately, and what I would do, frankly, as a citizen, and um, just seeing uh, Sutter's ad today is to challenge them and have them tell you what constitutes that $700 million worth of community benefit. Are you seeing it? What is it? Tell us what it is. I mean, what is really um, telling about the way that a number of these organizations, well, all these organizations report is that the numbers are the numbers. We have no idea what they mean. And I think there's a lot of conflation also going on between um, um, hospital organizations using charity care and community benefits interchangeably to add confusion to the discussion. Um, community benefits, I don't think it's necessarily charity care, uh, but there are some hospitals that use them interchangeably when they speak about it. But if I saw that ad today, I would be right back to them to say, prove it. Prove it. Okay. And I will bet you what they're talking about are things like publishing a brochure on a particular, you know, preventative disease. <laughs> Or um, you know, just something that is not about specific uh, you know, services to patients. Um, and that's not to say these things aren't worthy, but how do you put a value around that? I mean, to publish something, um, I was teasing earlier, the billboards that apparently have been put up, um, they might be counting that as a community benefit, who knows? But I would challenge them to say, tell us what this is. That would be my first, first uh, 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 point of action. Secondly, when we look at, I mean, what, what, part of the reason why I want to look at it statewide is that I believe there are some hospitals that are actually complying and doing their best to uh, provide care to those who are underinsured and uninsured. And I don't want to penalize those hospitals as we look at the state solution. Um, in fact, we ought to try to identify who they really are and see whether we can have them be the models for how uh, Sutter ought to behave. Uh, and that's really the challenge is that, you know, we have all this data, there are numbers, and frankly, on the welfare exemption numbers that I talked about, um, I don't even put a lot of value on that because, as I said, assessors don't update those numbers unless there's new construction. I think the number's really low. And so our challenge is, you know, what is that number, truly? And uh, how can we really put our arms around what the value of, that, uh, of, of the exemption is so that we can then uh, really demand, um, you know, a commensurate amount of uh, services uh, through charity care uh, to, uh, for them to maintain that exemption. Uh, for that requirement to be uh, the law in California that does require uh, either statutory change, and I believe our, our regulation process might be able to get us there. But the more immediate um, action that you can take is I would challenge the center today, right now, to say, prove to us what you've provided that equals the $700 some dollars. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jane Sutter. 
So just two quick specifics to answer your question. <clears throat> One of them was in the slides I was giving, which is that I think it's absolutely essential that San Angel Hospital partners with a um, basically a more robust health system of some kind uh, as a standalone community hospital. It's not just San Angel Hospital. Please do It's not like San Angel Hospital is a target, unlike other small community hospitals. You can go through the state of California and see literally hundreds of community hospitals of this size and volume that have struggled to stay by them. So partnership, and hopefully partnership with the type of hospital system that brings with it supplemental payment opportunities, consistent with the payer mix that San Angel Hospital already sees. So for San Angel Hospital to partner with someone who knows something about Medicare, not a good idea. For San Angel Hospital to partner with someone who doesn't have access to safety net care pool or other federal subsidy, not a good idea. So partnership has to happen, and that's absolutely essential for San Leandro to survive. On the revenue side, we have to look at new local revenue opportunities. This is also not the first community that's faced the challenge of a significant operating margin or gap, and I certainly agree that it's unclear what that gap is. Um, I'm not ready to accept uh, Sutter's statement that that gap is somewhere between 500 and a million a month. But HFS consultants did an independent study for the county. They showed something like four to five hundred k a month. So there is a real operating gap here. I do believe that's true, that there is an operating gap, and so that number has to be clarified and defined. And we have to look at local opportunities to raise those revenues. There are other hospital districts in Alameda County that do so. Uh, Alameda District and Washington Township Hospital District both have raised local revenue through parcel measures. Uh, so as Chan and others have, and the hospital district board have already begun an analysis of that. But the very specific um, suggestion I would say is look at opportunities locally to raise revenues to support operations. Thank you. Okay. And then not to put the Ian Township board on the spot, but, but Deb is here. Can you just tell us when you'll be able to tell people something about what's going on? Because because I know you're settling a lawsuit, so I'm not trying to tell you, ask you to say something that you can't say, but could, maybe you could just tell people kind of where you're at in terms of time frame. Uh, uh, thank you, Supervisor Chen. Uh, I am limited by what I can say, as uh, I think you heard on Chair Carol Rogers speak as a citizen. Uh, I can't say much more than we are talking, trying to find a solution that we keep sat in the hospital. Best I can do at this point. So. Oh, we have had a study done. I can say a few words about that. Uh, we use traumatola, I traumatola. A lot of you know, bodies helped uh, pass, uh, helped uh, healthcare districts and other public entities pass a lot of tax, uh, parcel tax measures in the state of California. And uh, the research that he had, uh, the research from did for us suggest that there is a willingness on the part of voters to pay taxes to support medical care in their communities. So some amount of parcel tax may be available, not this year, but in 2013 and beyond. Uh, there also needs to be some education and uh, knowledge about what Eden Township Healthcare District does. Eden has not been on the tax, Eden District has not been on the tax roll since 1977. So that, that means an option for, for us. So, there also, if, if, if a hospital becomes a part of a district or the county, or a government transfer opportunity, because other Christos talked about it. So, I hope that helps. Just to add, I think those are great suggestions, and I, I know this community just has been been through the ringer since 2009. I mean, it's, it's obvious, and I know it causes a lot of strain on the staff and patients, and particularly the elderly patients who go there. And um, you know, I just want to thank you for your um, stick to it because it's very difficult. Um, the reason I ask Deb is because you know, as we know, if if this community could just decide what to do, I'm sure we could come up with some physicians group or some group to, you know, to do something about it. But right now the title is still tied up. So hopefully the negotiations are going well and we'll hear something. Um, the purpose of having this hearing is frankly to call the center's attention how angry the community is about this. Uh, uh, you know, you all and most of you who live here and, and in the county, we pay these 
taxes that go to their to their benefit. Um, and I think that, um, as Betty said, we have to call attention to the fact that, yeah, prove to us what these benefits are. Are, are we accruing these benefits locally? I think that helps. Every little bit helps towards moving towards a better resolution. But we all know how difficult it's been. And I, you know, I just applaud you for sticking with it. So, um, Margaret Walker. Um, I think there's a logical absurdity. Um, if Sutter is a nonprofit hospital, how can it hold against San Leandro Hospital that it is not making a profit? It seems counterintuitive to me. Uh, believe it or not, 36 years ago, Alameda County was overbedded, not underbedded, for inpatient services. And I don't know about the emergency department capacity, but I imagine it too was overbedded. That is compared to our to a, a reasonable needs assessment and population demographics and geography and so forth. And uh, that has totally flipped the other direction. I'm astonished that we're 51st. I mean, that, uh, that's just almost incomprehensible to me. But normally when beds in a hospital or emergency department access is um, curtailed or ended, um, it involves not only a needs assessment, and um, I think you have convinced us very thoroughly that a needs assessment would indicate that we do need those services, um, but it's also can be based on outcome measures or um, acuity weighted comparisons like maybe some hospitals in their emergency rooms receive heart attacks that are less severe than other hospitals. But if a certain number of those patients have no option for care other than the emergency department of the hospital, then um, obviously um, Uh, the hospital emergency room will experience a wider variation and more patients in the lower acuity range. So um, I hope that in the future we can uh, look at the other aspects, outcome measures and experience in the hospital. Uh, before deciding to curtail those beds and services. Thank you. Hello, Thank, uh, thanks for holding this today. I'm Carol Barazzi, I work at San Leandro. I've been there for 25 years. Um, I agree with everything that's been said. Dr. Gingrey presented very well, summed it up well. Um, my question is, and I don't think you can answer it, but um, Sutter claims the charity care that they claim based on what? I mean, is it the inflated costs that they uh, charge that they would receive no reimbursement that would meet that from any payer? Um, what is it? I, uh, a couple of years ago, I haven't checked lately, but a couple of years ago, it cost like three times the amount to have a chest x-ray at San Leandro as it did at Eden. Chest x-ray is probably the most basic radiology procedure, not heavy in terms of manpower. And uh, so I don't really know what the difference could possibly be between the two campuses that would pop it up three times here and, and less than that there. So to me, that's very critical in knowing, you know, how much charity care are they providing? One of the docs I work with told me that he has one of his patients go to St. Rose because if they came to San Leandro in about six months, their insurance would be used up. But at St. Rose, it got them through the year. So, I mean, that really has to be looked at. I know they don't release their books, so that's really um, a big problem right there. Also, um, I also worked at Eden simultaneously with working at San Leandro until we merged. I worked in labor and delivery. 
And I just want to go on record as saying the fact that they want to make that a level one nursery is really a super disservice to the community. That will mean that moms who are high risk will have to go to Alta Bates. Um, that's it, I'll have to go to Alta Bates because um, they won't take the chance of having them labor at Eden once they're identified as high risk. I was a high risk pregnancy with my last one. I lived in San Leandro, we hadn't merged at that time, but here at the hospital, my son came over after school, he could ride his bike. That's not gonna happen in Castro Valley or residents of San Leandro. They're, they're gonna be so stressed, those families, to try to deal with their little kids who are still in school and still get up to Berkeley to visit. And it's really, I mean, somebody has to hold them accountable for this. It is not community friendly. And the last thing I wanted to say was when we had a meeting here a while ago, we talked about ERs closing. And uh, Channel 2, I think it was, did a little thing on that. And they mentioned that ERs across the country are closing primarily by corporate chains who own them because there's no money in ERs. And I mean, there doesn't have to be money in everything. Just have to see how you spend it and use your resources. Thank you. Hi, I'm not Dr. Williams, I'm patient Williams, I'm Craig Williams, actually. You know. you're, you're too Craig Williams. The two Craig Williams, whichever one you want to do. All right, the, um, the two things I'd like to uh, just bring up, and uh, hopefully the Board of Equalization can take a look at them. One is the um, CEO compensation. You know, Jamie Dimon was testifying last week, and, uh, you know, they, they questioned him several times about, you know, his compensation and, you know, he shot back, well, my board determines my compensation. No one, uh, you know, did a follow-up question asking them, well, who appoints your board? You know, and as it turns out, the CEO appoints the board. And if anybody disagrees with the high salary, they're going to get knocked off the board. What I'd like to see the board do, maybe, Board of Equalization do, is look into the votes in terms of Patrick Fry's pay raises. Were the votes completely in favor of the pay raise? And, you know, what is the quid pro quo between the CEO and the boards? Um, you know, we have this going on throughout the country where corporation after corporation are doing it. This is why the CEOs are making what they're making, is because the board members are making two to $300,000 a year, um, which is a very plump job for showing up five, six times a year to a board meeting. The other thing about their board, um, is that it's almost entirely made up of uh, corporate types who are like in the commercial real estate industry, who are affiliated with uh, uh, high tech companies. You know, they, they don't represent really uh, the medical industry. And ideally, what we should have is centers should have, and not in charitable hospitals in general, should have, you know, maybe four or five nurses on their board. Yeah. You know, if they had nurses on their board, um, you know, the whole behavior of, uh, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, Sutter or other charitable hospitals would be completely different. The second point I wanted to make is uh, um, basically the real, ch one of the biggest tragedies is what Sutter charges the uninsured. When an uninsured person comes into Sutter, and I know the mayor's, uh, uh, one of his co-workers at the firm he was at was, uh, was involved in this huge lawsuit where, um, you know, they paid out hundreds of thousands of dollars for overcharging the uninsured. You know, it's a tragedy. We've got, you know, people, a 20-year-old woman who's making uh, uh, less than $25,000 a year, the kid falls down, and they charge the kid double to fix the kid's arm. And then they go, they turn around and garnish the wages of that person making $25,000 a year. I'd also like to see if we could do something in terms of you know, looking at these collection uh, lawyers and, you know, seeing how extensive that is within the county. Thank you. You want the other Craig Williams? <laughs> I'm, I'm Dr. Williams. I'm the director of the ICU at St. Landry Hospital. I thought, uh, I want to make two points. I want to try to put some numbers to what Bob King was talking about. Right now, there's 27 ICU beds uh, at the Eden Hospital, and there's um, nine beds in our ICU. So a quarter of the ICU beds in this community are at San Leandro Hospital. Even now, in the last 
about every two or three months we get a call um, to sometimes we have to transfer a patient to Eden for more specialized services and there often is not an ICU, ICU bed even now. And in the busy times, in the, in the winter times, there are times when there aren't enough ICU beds as we stand now. So if you take away a quarter of the ICU beds in the community, it's going to be a nightmare. And a couple of other things are going to happen. How do you open up an ICU bed? You move the patient from the ICU to the ward. There are going to be less ward beds if you take away 60 beds here and br bring their beds down from 180 to 130. When the ICU fills up, what happens? The ER goes on divert. And, and the people have even suggested that maybe that be, that's part of the plan to divert. Um, as we all know, ER patients, that's really not very well paying. So it, it, whether that's part of the bigger plan or just an oversight is unclear to me. But it's going to be a disaster if, if that happens. Um, second thing is on one of your earlier slides, you, you had a phrase about nonprofits um, taking on for profit entities. Um, a few years ago, I believe Sutter was and is still trying to get control of the surgery center in town. Um, and it, it was pretty close to going through. It was so close to going through that a couple of the insurance companies, well, and this is all hearsay, you know, I don't have any proof of this. Um, a couple of the insurance companies actually thought Sutter had obtained the surgery center and for two or three months was actually sending reimbursements to the surgery center based on the fact that Sutter had it. And so for a procedure that was going to cost $1,000 or $2,000, suddenly the surgery center is getting two to $4,000. In many cases, double things. Um, so I think they, they had the, um, and, and a couple of years ago when Triad owned this hospital, Triad told us that we could no longer, Blue Shield or Blue Cross could no longer come to San Leandro when it was owned by Triad. And I asked them why, and they said, because, um, I said, why don't you just negotiate with them and, you know, match the price that Eden Sutter was giving you. Said, they said the companies won't even talk to us, were too small. So uh, these big organizations are getting this monopoly pricing ability. Um, and as a personal, just as a personal, my wife needed a culture done as an outpatient. And uh, if she had gone through the, the in-house lab in the office building, it would have been about $75. At Sutter, it was $400. I called Blue Shield and said, how can it be $400? And they said, well, that's the price we negotiated. Now, I suggested they get a better negotiator. <laughs> but it just didn't, it, it, I see this monopoly pricing in addition to all the other problems. So I guess my time's up. It's Gloria Pinio. Um, I'm a long time, lifetime resident of San Leandro. And what Dr. Gingri and Dr. Williams said has so much truth to it. Seeing it from 38 years of experience as a volunteer at San Leandro Hospital, more lives are going to be lost. If we have to turn away some of those people, disaster for San Leandro. On a personal note, I've had to experience at San Leandro Hospital and Eden. Twice at the trauma center at Eden. Once was a great experience for my husband. The second one for an over a little lady that I oversee. 36 hours before they let me see the patient and I had a durable power of attorney. This little lady thought she was in a hotel. She was having a gay dine. When they got her to the ICU, the doctor said, da 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 da, and I said, I don't talk to anybody. I don't know nothing. I was given the papers that day, or that at that moment, the gentleman went out and got papers for me to file a formal complaint to Sutter. Have I heard from Pat Fry? No. I personally did what I was supposed to do, and I did it on a personal basis. To this day, I have not heard from Pat Fry. I was recommended to go to Corbett's office, and they helped me and recommended for me to do certain things. But have I heard from Pat Fry? No. I was, I've been a patient at San Leandro and have gotten wonderful care. At Sutter, when I had one surgery, disaster. 
second surgery, disaster. I came away with an infection, and it wasn't only me, it was the patient after me also had the same infection, and gave me five more months out of my everyday life. Fewer beds, more disasters. Fewer ERs, diversions, more loss of lives. Think of the human element. Sutter does not have the human element. And good luck on getting an answer to that ad that's in the paper. Good luck. Frank Mellon, I'm here as a uh, private citizen, not as a member of the East Bay Mud Board. But I want to note something. I've been in labor relations for many years and negotiated with the nurses' union as well as some of the others here. One of the things I noted in other charitable and nonprofit areas is there is a legal requirement that there be consumers as part of the board. For example, nonprofit mental health agencies, consumers are part of the board of directors. Nonprofit retirement homes, consumers are part of the board. The challenge I make to you is if you are going to address this issue of quote nonprofit, then you should address it in a more uniform fashion. If an organization is going to be a nonprofit, they need to have their consumers as part of their board. Second point for me I lived in Castor Valley 30 plus years. I can't tell you how frustrated I am by the original hospital we were pr promised when Sutter bought and the hospital we're getting. And I saw the numbers. I worked with construction industry. I knew their numbers were grossly understated. And when they finally got around to admitting that their numbers were understated, they said the only way they could do a hospital was at a lesser amount of beds. In Europe, they have a process of social value when they value organizations, both profit and nonprofit. I would suggest the Board of Equalization would have the opportunity to look into that as to say, what is the social value of reducing the size of a hospital to a smaller hospital that has a monetary factor to the community in jobs and in other elements to the community, such as purchases and so forth, and then secondarily, what is the social value of closing a hospital, not only in terms of jobs, but also in economic impact to the community? If an organization is going to be a nonprofit, then that nonprofit needs to be able to demonstrate that it is meeting that. Finally, I know that the county is strapped for money like everybody else. And to that extent, I know that your reimbursement to nonprofits has been lower as well. But to me, that's a different type of thing where they are dedicated to providing services to the county as opposed to an organization that is quote nonprofit that is providing services <coughs> at large. Thank you for your time. Thank you to the supervisor and the board member. You've taken a lot of time out of your day to come and talk to us. Hi, I'm Marilyn Singleton. I've been a physician for 40 years, and I just have a question. We see that Kaiser is building a huge new hospital. Has there been any effort to make any kind of partnership arrangements, such as Dr. Briscoe was talking about, with Kaiser to fill in the local gap? The short answer is no. So I, I think that's a suggestion that should be followed. Okay, um, April Blackman. And then actually there is one more. Uh, Cindy Simpoli. Um, I just have a couple questions. Um, what about the fact that Sutter has for-profit subsidies? And um, the second, okay. Uh, they do, but they are not uh, funneled through 
their nonprofit organization. What is the relationship between the BOE and state franchise state uh, tax board? Uh, we actually have a very close relationship, but the franchise tax board oversees the uh, income tax. Um, so they would be looking at the hospitals with respect to any uh, income tax exemptions and exceptions. So the uh, Form 990H that I talked about with respect to the internal revenue service uh, requirement, that is something that uh, uh, Franchise Tax Board has um, certainly taken additional interest in, but uh, they have jurisdiction of the income tax. We have jurisdiction of the property tax and how it's administered in all 58 counties. Hi, uh, my name is Cindy. I'm uh, currently a nurse at the San Leandro um, Emergency Department. And uh, prior to that, I was a nurse over at the Eden campus um, on the psychiatric unit. So hopefully that's not um, a scenario I'm going to have to live through again. Um, I just briefly want to just uh, touch touch on my concerns that um, in terms of mental health, there's just so many people um, that are not getting their, their mental health issues addressed. And when people are not um, allowed or provided for to take care of their mental health issues, their physical health issues decline. And, you know, it's been mentioned here a few times that, you know, we, we live in a, a day that um, our whole health care system is, you know, incredibly taxed and it's probably only going to get worse. And so this is just a very large piece of, um, of health care that I, I hope we don't lose sight of. So, thank you. Yeah, very important point. Yes. Yes. Could I just uh, add something that I saw while watching uh, Dr. Williams speaking? I saw two ambulances with their red lights flashing going to the ER. So it's busy again, Dr. Gingrey. See you later. Uh, two of them. In that few minutes that Dr. Williams was speaking, I saw one on that side and one go right by here with their red lights going. That is going to the ER. Yeah, that is why it must remain system. open. Absolutely. Okay, I want to just take this opportunity to thank um, Betty Yee for spending all this time with us. And uh, thank you for the DOE community wise. Um, I don't know if you all have any closing comments or words. I just want to thank people and wish you a good weekend. take on the challenge that this young woman uh, introduced. I, I, for one, am very curious as to what that 700 plus million is comprised of. I think it would be instructive for us as a board to the state um, so that we can understand how Sutter is viewing and characterizing community benefits. And I think the question that Supervisor Chan raised, where are those benefits being offered? Uh, geographically, I mean, we certainly know what the needs are here locally, but uh, they are a large health system but then to claim that kind of a, uh, a value, uh, I think all of us should take an interest. So I, 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 for one, am ready to write a letter and to really just challenge it publicly to say, you know, show us. Show us. Yeah. So we're